continuing on with uh, Pasquale and his introduction to the common chord. Of the first and second common chord, to each of the seven notes of music, it is for expedition's sake, in other words, just to make life easier for himself and you and me and everyone else, that I call them first and second chords, instead of first and second way of common chords. And we'll see them shortly on the stave. The first is that which is naturally used to notes bearing this chord. The second is only brought in on some particular occasions, as hereafter shall be explained. But, before we examine when the second chords are to be used, it is requisite to acquire a local memory of the first, and also a readiness of the fingers in playing them, for which purpose Lesson 1, see Plate 1, is to be practised until the scholar plays it tolerably quick, and also it will be advisable to play it as a general kind of prelude or as a kind of a general prelude before the other lessons, still with a view of getting the habit of striking always the first chords when no reason obliges to do otherwise. And as I suppose that the unexperienced might be at a loss what fingers to apply to the chords and to the notes of the bass, I have annexed in this and a few other lessons a small figure to each for his introduction, and from thence he may form an idea of the rest. And of course Pasquale's other famous work is The Art of Fingering the Harpsichord, which is all about this. Nota bene, note well, zero stands for the thumb, one stands for the forefinger, two stands for the second finger, three stands for the third finger, and four stands for the little finger. When the scholar is become tolerably well acquainted with the way of fingering the chords and the bass notes, it will be necessary to practice the same lesson without the help of looking to the chords above the notes and peruse it as it is set in plate 13, which method must also be observed with regard to the other lessons as soon as they are become a little familiar. Any doubt that arises concerning the chords or the way of fingering them may be easily solved by turning back a few leaves and viewing them again set at their full length. So now we have the first chord, the bass note being C. And the second chord. the third chord and the fourth chord and the fifth example Example and the last one and then But instead of playing that, Pasquale prefers you to play this.
Note that in these examples, I've played the bass note slightly in advance of the chord. When the second chords are to be applied, the second chords are used for the following reasons. One, in order to avoid two consecutive or following octaves between the highest note of the chords and the notes of the bass. Two, in order to avoid two consecutive or following fifths between the highest note of the chords and the notes of the bass. Three, in order to render some chords more harmonious by their places. In order to avoid skipping too much from one chord to another. So just a practical circumstances of not have your hand jump around. Of two consecutive or following octaves and how to avoid them. It is disallowed in thorough basses to play two chords following one another whose highest note is the octave of the bass. E.g. by examining the first chords at 9 where the highest notes are figured we shall find that only C and D fall under this rule both having the octave for their highest note. So let's have a look at this. Here is C and the highest note here is the octave and D. And the highest note here is the octave. Therefore, when C is found preceding or following D, instead of its first, its second chord must be played by which the highest note of C's chord is changed from the octave to the third, and so on. <laughs>